Because let's face it, when coffee started to be drank so many, many, many years ago, this is how it had to be ground. Hi everyone, I'm Brian with FrenchPressCoffee.com and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the famous Hario Ceramic Coffee Mill Skirton. Now, the Hario Ceramic Coffee Mill Skirton is a really trusted and well-known coffee grinder for coffee lovers, coffee enthusiasts, and a lot of folks that we've talked to here at FrenchPressCoffee.com, but there's one little problem. All the instructions are in Japanese for it. So we thought that we would make a guide to show you exactly how you can set up, use, properly adjust for grind, and this is gonna be the really important part, and clean your Hario Skirton. Now this is going to be a slightly long video, so if you're interested in seeing a specific part of the video, you can check out in the description of our video the time codes that will allow you to click to the portion that you would like to watch. Let's talk firstly about the parts for the Hario Skirt and Grinder. We have on the far left here our glass jar. This is where our grounds are going to, of course, end up as we grind our coffee. Then we have our bean hopper, and this is an important uh, part of the Hario Grinder, not only because it's where our beans go, but also because it does have a burr on its bottom, a ceramic burr here for grinding. So that is a very important part of the grinding process with the Hario Skirton. Then we have our second part of our burr grinder. This is again a ceramic grinder with the metal shaft. This is going to all come together, of course, and I'm going to show that to you in a moment, to grind your coffee. We also have this small clear washer, and this is a really important little piece, which is why you want to make sure you keep an eye on it. It's a little hard because it is clear, so always keep a good eye on that when you're cleaning. We'll talk about that later on. Next up, we have our adjustment nut, and we're going to talk about why that is important in a moment. We also have our nut stopper. That's going to interface with the adjustment nut. Then we have the handle, pretty straightforward, of course. This is for turning to grind. It is plastic and very easy to make use of. And finally, we have our fixing cap and the lid to our hopper. Let's assemble the Hario Skirton, and I'm going to start with just the hopper and burr grinder portion. We're going to not focus on the glass jar just yet. First of all, we're going to take our shaft and second part of our burr grinder, and we're just going to insert that, and you'll see it slides up and directly through the center of the hopper. Now we're going to start putting everything together. Our washer is going to come first. Place that washer right there and it's going to fill that tiny little gap between your shaft and your adjustment nut, which is coming up next. Then we're going to take that adjustment nut, put it on top of the shaft, and we're going to screw it down not too hard. Don't crank it. And here's the reason that we're going to not crank this over. This is going to set us up for the zero position for our grinder. And this is going to be important down the road for when we're choosing the type of grind that we want to make use of. And as I say, that's really important, so we'll get into that in a moment. So don't wrench that down, just finger tight, and you should be fine. Next up, you'll take your adjustment nut, and you're going to place this on top of the shaft. You're gonna notice that it's only going to fit in a certain way, so I can't force this on. I can just turn it until it slides on, and that's because this is lightly keyed and a little square, so it'll pop right on. After that, you can take your lid and pop it on if you want. You don't have to put this on right now because I found that you can also slide this on with the handle on. The handle will go on again in the same way as that retaining nut because it is keyed a little bit. So just pop that handle on and then tighten down your fixing cap. And again, you don't need to wrench any of this down very hard. You want to be light on it. And finally, you can put your lid on by sort of just stretching it over the handle down over the shaft of the handle, and then everything is together. Now, of course, the important thing here that we've skipped over that we're going to dedicate a whole portion to is how to adjust for grind, because in this case, you're still in the zero position, and you want to choose the proper grind, so we're gonna show you guys how to do that right now. Let me show you how to adjust for the proper grind on the Hario Skirt and Grinder. This is pretty easy once you get the hang of it, so I'll just show you guys how. I'm going to remove the fixing nut, and then I'm going to remove the handle. 
And after I've removed the handle, I will remove the retaining nut. I'm gonna set all of this aside. Now what I have here again is the grind adjustment nut. And this is a little trick that we've come up with here at frenchpresscoffee.com. We've marked a notch on the adjustment nut by making use of a red marker. And we've marked one notch here, and then we've marked down and onto the hopper shaft. And so what this allows us to do is line those two up. And this just is a way for us to start off and get to know this as time goes on. I think you'll be able to just eyeball this and turn as you need to. But this allowed us to be able to really know that we were turning the adjustment nut the right amount of notches for the grind that we're looking for. And when I say a notch, I am talking about this actual physical notch right here inside the adjustment nut. So when I talk about turning counterclockwise to adjust for that, one notch would basically look like this. So I'll show that to you again. I know that my red line here designates sort of my starting point. So if I wanna turn two notches, this would be one notch and this is two notches. So it's a quick and easy way to just get yourself used to this. And remember, the important part here is that I've zeroed out the grinder. I know that I have this finger tightened down and I have my burrs together on the bottom half of the hopper. So I'm in the zero position. So anywhere I adjust from now is just going to be done in single notches or more than one notch, depending on the type of grind. And let's talk about the grind that you would use for the number of notches that you would turn. And before I talk about the different grinds that we can make use of by turning these notches, let me just show you a little bit of what this looks like. If I turn one notch right now, just one, and I flip the grinder over, you can see I have just a tiny bit of play in my burrs. So of course that's going to give me a more fine grind. And we'll turn this up a few more notches and you can see I get more play. And then if I turn this fully, this would be a complete 360 essentially. And if I flip that over, you can see how much play I have there. So this is going to give me that clearance that I need between the burrs in order to grind my coffee beans. And again, the closer that they are together, the closer my burrs are, again, one notch, the finer my grind because the less play between my burrs. So moving on with that knowledge, moving from a zero point setting, on the burrs for my Hario skirt. And this makes it pretty easy for me to know how many notches one by one I need to turn my adjustment nut in order to get the type of coffee grind that I would like. And here's what I could get with those different types of grinds. With one notch of turn, I could get espresso, mocha pots, uh, a very fine grind essentially. We will preface this by saying that with a full on uh, espresso machine, an automated machine, something along those lines. This might not get as fine as you need it. You would want to experiment with this, but for a mocha pot or just an espresso style grind, this works great. Medium to fine grind would be two notches. This is great for AeroPress or pour over cones. Medium grind would be three notch turns, and that's great for drip cone or pour over cones. Medium to coarse grind would be five turns, five notches and that's for a Clever Brewer or a Chemex, something along those lines. And finally, coarse grind. To get a coarse grind, you'll want to turn the adjustment nut seven notches. This is great for French press, cupping, or for any other coarse grind uh, needs that you might have with the beans inside of the hopper. Now, all of this is just a baseline for you to work off of. And remember, this is subjective because taste is subjective. You're going to want to find the grind that works best for your coffee experience. And so as a result, you're going to want to tweak your adjustment nut on your Hario grinder in order to find exactly what you want out of the grind that you're looking to achieve with the grinder. And let's talk about how to clean the Hario skirt and grinder. And this is fairly straightforward. First of all, separate the glass container and the hopper. Remove the locking screw, the handle, the stopper, and the washer. Make sure to really keep track of that washer because again, it's easy to lose. Put that somewhere where you're going to remember where it is. And then wash all the parts with water. Every part of the Hario skirt and is uh, washable by hand. So you'll want to use a light detergent, dish soap, something along those lines, and a good brush to clean it. Don't be too heavy on it. Just take your time, get it nice and clean, and then dry it, dry each portion and put it back together in the way that we've shown you here in our video.
And here's a few general tips to keep in mind when you're using the Hario skirt and grinder. Tip number one is take your time grinding. Grind slowly. Don't rush your grinding. Don't turn really, really quickly. Just take your time, grind slowly, and this is going to give you a good grind on your coffee. And tip number two is don't grind with your Hario skirt and grinder without beans in the hopper, and definitely do not turn your grinder counterclockwise because doing either of those things might damage the burrs in the skirt and grinder. Tip number three is don't adjust for extremely fine grinds like Turkish style coffee because that could also damage the burrs in your grinder. Coffee bean oil can add up and build up on the coffee burrs, so just make sure to keep them clean, soak them every once in a while in a neutral detergent, and then clean them very carefully. Don't use bleach or any harsh detergents or cleaners on your burrs. Tip number five, if you want to protect your countertop, your wood table, or your workspace, make sure to use the silicon pad that covers the bottom of the glass jar portion of the grinder. This way when you're grinding, you won't drag that glass over your surface and take the chance of scratching it. Tip number six, don't use a metal spoon for tapping on the glass or anything along those lines. A wood spoon is recommended. You could scratch the glass or even worse, of course, you could break it with a metal spoon. Tip number seven, the grinder is completely washable. So that's a good reason to keep it clean as often as possible. Uh, the entire thing can be cleaned. All of the metal is stainless steel. The ceramic burrs are able to be cleaned very easily. And unlike metal burrs, they are going to be rust free. So with a little bit of care, this grinder should last you probably for a lifetime. And tip number eight, by using the lid, which comes with the Hario skirt and grinder, your glass jar can now become a storage container for your ground coffee. And there you have it guys, everything that you need to know about the Hario Skirtin Ceramic Mill Burr Grinder. Uh, now, if you guys have questions, comments, if we've missed anything, or if there's anything you'd like to know more about, make sure to get in touch in the comments section of this video, or of course, visit us at frenchpresscoffee.com. We're always happy to talk coffee with you guys. We hope that you found this useful, and as I say, Really, once you get used to using this grinder, I think it's just going to become sort of second nature. Just spend a little time getting to know that adjustment process, and you should be all set to get some really great coffee ground. And uh, you get the enjoyment of knowing that you did it by hand, so you probably get a little bit of a workout at the same time. Never hurts, right? As always, guys, I'm Brian with FrenchPressCoffee.com. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, take care. If you like that video, go ahead and give it a like. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to our channel? And I'll go ahead and wait for you. If you do, I'll give you a nice coffee quote. Go on. Oh, thank you so much. And now for the quote. I would stop drinking coffee, but I'm no quitter.